and men. And my daughter. <laughs> and, and your daughter. Thank you for this opportunity, and God bless you all. Um, uh, my name is Ann Madden, and we have three daughters. And one is quite a special character. And I am here on behalf of all parents of special needs children to thank TriMet for what they, um, we, we trust these people to you every day, and you take care of them so beautifully. Katie was transit trained when she was 18, which was very frightening to us because we knew it opened up the whole region to her, and by gosh, it has, and it has turned out very, very beautifully. Um, it's like a magic carpet ride for her, and the bus drivers are so kind to her. They've been known to get out of their chairs and put the chain back on her bike. Anyway, um, I think Katie can speak for herself better than I can speak for her, so Katie Dunn, take your three minutes. I was speaking in favor of one with a disability today and all my friends. I have been running tournament for 20 years, all through high school, and I have help. Most disabilities need help every day. And I, my dad always helped me out get my bus pass when I first moved, when I first started. And I never left home without it. Every year I get the guidebook at the Pioneer Courthouse Square as well as I do my own trip planning. Now I use my, I have trying a speed dial on my cell phone now, and I use it when I go to any stop ID number I can find wherever I go. I also started Bikes on Trimit in the year 1998. I use the bike rack and the bus most of the time, and I started using the Max with the bike five years ago. The only hard time I had was using those bike hooks on the top half of the corner of the max train, and I had a few people help me out a few times. Most of the time, I would sit down with the bike using the wheelchair access. And three years ago, I got my animal passed by mail every year. Ever since, after two years, it was the commuter rail. And I started that in 2009, two years ago. I have been going on round trips on the commuter rail with the bike, and sometimes without. And I think disabilities, like me, or my friends, and everyone here today, should always ask for help when they need it. Thank you. Thank you. Gracie oh. Bentley. about TriMet's history in, in um, trying to get public participation 
when they, uh, for their routes, particularly for light rail, but for other routes too, and how important it has been historically. Because when they hadn't done that, they received some very difficult um, uh, relationships with communities that they've moved, moved into. And TriMet has learned very, very well. We are a product, because in Oak Grove, we, there were numerous meetings scheduled by TriMet representatives to try to uh, incorporate our, the, the feelings of our community into the planning of this light rail project. As a result of that, we in Oak Grove began, and we spoke with them and told them that yes, we welcomed light rail, because Oak Grove had had a history previously of not welcoming light rail. We did welcome light rail, but we didn't really want to have a station move onto McLaughlin Boulevard in a terribly, terribly debilitated area and have this area, have this area further degraded. So instead, TriMet, along with Metro, asked us to apply for a Nature in the Neighborhoods grant. We did. Our community did. I want you to understand, not did we just apply for a grant, but our community, which involved the CPO of the area, which involved the CPO of Jennings Lodge, which involved Oak Lodge Sanitary, which involved the neighborhood groups, our entire, our entire community got together and put a grant together, a grant that would then take this station, which is going to be the terminus of this line, and actually begin to incorporate riparian forest into it, integrate habitat into it, into it, and try to make, make this the greenest station in the United States. This was done as a community effort. Everybody in our community participated, everybody that we could find, all organizations, all the surrounding neighborhood. I want you to understand, TriMet really cooperated with this, as did Metro, and we got this grant. We got a grant from Metro for $350,000 to begin putting this together. TriMet participated, the Oak Lodge Sanitary participated, our entire community participated. So we want you to understand this is a very, very important thing for our community. And one little addition I need to tell you about. In, during the 70s, I was a, uh, uh, I lived in the area of Georgetown in Washington, D.C. and worked there. While the metro was being planned, during that time, they had a referendum, and Georgetown itself decided they didn't want a station. They didn't want a station. The entire metro, it runs right under Georgetown. Georgetown's the only area that does not have a station. It has become, when I talk to my friends, the greatest mistake that any community has ever made, because they don't have a station. So I want you to understand, they understood it, they know what a mistake they made. We welcome it. Thank Our you. community welcomes it, and thank you for thank you. Yeah. doing it. Okay. All right. Um, I, I know that because my son lives there, and um, he would love to have a station. Lou, Lou Church. I'm Lou with uh, PSU Progressive Student Union and Transit Writers Union. Uh, I got to talk to a few of the ATU uh, picketers this morning. I was curious if any of the board members took time to talk to some of the picketers this morning. Or if Neil did. You did. Is that yes? You're nodding. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, what I heard was no contract, no peace. I think that's a good slogan. Transit Writers Union supports the right to health care, a basic fundamental right of workers. Obama just spent a lot of time and energy expanding health care. TriMet needs to support health care for ATU workers. Um, we've also heard in previous meetings quite a bit about safety. Um, Transit Writers Union supports the need for safety and oversight and transparency. Um, in the past, Transit Writers Union uh, turned in I handed the board president 1,400 petitions, uh, signatures against fare cuts and against service, uh, against fare hikes and against service cuts. Uh, the board voted six to one and ignored those 1,400 transit riders. 
Uh, we picketed Portland Business Alliance because they supported the cut to Fairless Square. Uh, we're glad to see ATU having a much larger picket today. Jonathan with ATU said he thinks this is the largest demonstration against TriMet in the history of the agency. That's good. Um, there's also, as the board knows, but others may not, uh, the Reedville Cafe boycott uh, to elect the TriMet board. Uh, Steve, uh, Rick, who's the, uh, Rick Van Beveren, the current board president, owns the Reedville Cafe. And because transit voters have been ignored, and because there's been a stalemate with ATU, and because of safety and other concerns, uh, TRU, Transit Writers Union, has organized the boycott against the cafe. Uh, Tom Hughes, the conservative uh, candidate for Metro President, had his victory party in May uh, at Reedville Cafe. Uh, and as well, Rick, as he's mentioned in the past, uh, and acknowledged, has voted for every fair increase and every service cut in the past two years. Um, boycotts and ballots are extremely useful. In 64 and 65, the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act uh, were instigated in part by direct action, which include, included boycotts and pickets by Dr. Kane, FCLC. Um, there's two ways to elect the TriMet board. One is having Metro take it over under ORS statute so that Metro is elected and therefore the TriMet board would be elected. Uh, a second method is for an initiative petition, uh, putting it on the ballot and having people vote to require the TriMet board to be elected. These are both long-term projects of transfer. No contract, no peace is an excellent slogan. Um, we also want to just comment, lastly, um, that the Oregonian editorial board, with whom we disagree completely, on both the tax measure and voter-owned elections, uh, oddly, we believe, um, came out against both those things. Voter-owned elections is a way for there to be more democracy and transparency locally and accountability, and the tax measure is a way for seniors and disabled riders to uh, get new buses, something we've pushed for for years. Thank you.